You need to let inspiration inside of you like electricity and you're being electrocuted on an electric fence. That's the power of inspiration. Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Cognitive Entrepreneur. Today, uh, we have a subject that I am very passionate about, very inspired about, is uh, the concept of inspiration. Where does inspiration come from? How do people get inspiration? Uh, wh what is inspiration? And how can you harness it? How can you harness inspiration like, uh, like a weapon? because that's what inspiration is. It's a weapon. It's like a big ax. You can hack your way through this entrepreneurial journey to get to uh, where it is you need to be. And that's what inspiration is. It's a, it's a sharp, it's a sharp ax welded, very fine. And the sharper that ax can be, the better that you can cut down trees, cut down uh, any sort of obstacles, mental obstacles mental obstacles. That is the biggest challenge to anybody in the world is mental obstacles. A lot of people talk about uh, problems with the world, that the world is going to, to, to hell in a handbasket. The world is a gigantic dumpster. It's a filthy dumpster that's getting filled with garbage and trash and refuse and filth and it's sick. And I think it makes a lot of people sick. I think a lot of people view the world as a, some sort of sick, uh, gigantic garbage can that uh, people are defecating in and vomiting in, and it's a disgusting sight. Um, but what is leading to these problems? What is leading to this gigantic dumpster? A lot of people are saying global warming. A lot of people are saying drugs. A lot of people are saying crime. A lot of people are saying China. A lot of people are saying a lack of awareness. <laughs> I agree with that. I agree with that. Watch the other episode I did and you'll know I agree with that, but that's not what I'm talking about. The global problem that, that, that is, 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 is the problem is not health. It's not education. It's not diet. It's not war. It's not famine. It's mental obstacles. Uh, get it, you know, you could solve anything in the world if you didn't have any mental obstacles. Do you think Einstein had mental obstacles? No. That guy jumped over those mental obstacles. He cut through them. Not many people know this. Einstein had one of the sharpest cognitive hatchets uh, in global history. It's been unprecedented. It, it is something to honor. It is something to cherish. This sharp hatchet, this blood-covered hatchet. A lot of people think the symbol of, of peace, of humanity, is like a dove. Or, or, a, or, a, or a feather or a ribbon. I completely disagree with that. I think that's uh, nonsense. I think it's gibberish. The symbol of humanity and prosperity is just a hatchet sitting on the forest floor covered in blood and Einstein standing above said hatchet screaming into the dark woods. That's a symbol of hope. So to be able to cut through these mental obstacles with a bloody hatchet is, is crucial is crucial to becoming a cognitive entrepreneur. So crucial. What I want to address today, how do you sharpen this hatchet? How do you sharpen this hatchet of inspiration and be able to cut through the mental obstacles that you are facing? Everybody needs a bloody hatchet. You're lying to yourself and to your family if you don't think you need the hatchet. You know, you need the hatchet, all right? You need to be able to cut down some things. Now, the main thing a lot of people uh, are wondering is, how do you find inspiration? How do you come up with the idea that's gonna change everything about the world and how people act? A lot of people have different ways they get inspired. They look at the big idea. They look at the macro idea, macro concepts, macro thinking, macro hacking. I love macro inspiration. The big picture, the gigantic picture that's in front of you and how can you reshape that picture and rip some of the paint off and put new paint and say, look, hey, Mona Lisa, I like the smile, but I'm going to change the outfit. Are you going to be the person that rips down the Mona Lisa and changes that outfit? Because I am going to be that. 
And I hope you can be too. I hope we all undress the Mona Lisa and put her into new garb. Some people get inspiration through looking inward. What is it I need? What is it I want? Uh, for example, the man that invented the toilet. Not many people know this, but uh, he came from the swamp. He came from, he came from a swamp-like environment in deep, deep Europe. He looked inward and said, I'm tired of, of taking a crap in a swamp. Um, somebody needs to do something about this. That person, that somebody is me. So he did something about it. He did something about it. You know what he did? He invented the toilet. He looked inward, found inspiration, sharpened his hatchet, created a toilet, made money, conquered his mental obstacles, and his name now will never be forgotten. His name will never be forgotten. That swamp man, that man from a swamp who invented a toilet. Um, what an inspiration that man is. Some people find inspiration through nature, uh, like they go on a hike and they start walking through the woods on a trail and they start looking at animals and they get inspired by that or they look at a creek. Um, I don't know anything about that. Uh, I just read that on the internet that some people get inspired by nature. Uh, I mean, I, I certainly don't. I'm not going into the woods and coming up with the next great entrepreneurial idea. I'm not gonna find that standing next to a creek bed. Um, but apparently on the internet, some people have expressed that they find inspiration uh, through nature. I think those people are lunatics. I personally find nature to be pretty dumb, but you know, to each their own, I suppose. I'm not gonna take away their cognitive hatchet. That would be indecent of me. A big way I find inspiration is through other people. I like to call them cognitive mentors, people that have changed everything. That's where I find inspiration. That's where I, that's where I get the goods, you know? I don't need to go to a, a creek. Uh, I, I look at the people that have changed things. I'll list off a couple for you. One, Steve Jobs. He said, you know what? I, I need a computer. There aren't any computers. Computers don't exist. I'm gonna make a computer. And so Steve Jobs, he invented a computer. He invented the computer. Uh, he, is, he invented all computers. And that is very inspiring. It's very inspiring that somebody invented a computer. Honestly, I would say it was probably the most important invention of the early 90s was computers. Without computers, who knows where we'd be? We'd probably be scurrying around in the dirt. So, you know, hats off to Steve Jobs. But here's the thing, but here's the thing. Steve Jobs said, uh-uh, that's not enough. I need to keep inventing stuff. So what did he do? He invented the MP3 player. Steve Jobs invented music players in the early 2000s. Before that, people were had to carry around uh, record players uh, and 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 blast vinyl um, in archaic age. Congratulations, Steve Jobs, for doing that. What a man! What an inspiration! What a hatchet! He didn't stop there. He kept inventing. He kept sharpening that hatchet. You know, brain phones, pads, turtlenecks. What a guy! No one has invented more things in history than Steve Jobs. This is a, a, an absolute fact. Historians, you, you ask historians, they'll say this, he was unprecedented. Nobody in history has ever done this. There's never been a time in history when some one person did so much, invented so much, nobody else. Um, he is uh, the, the greatest man of any age. Uh, th every historian will say that with, a, with complete conviction. They'll look you in the eye. And if you ever ask them that question, they'll look you in the eye. And if you, if you disagree with that, they will punch you in the face and say, get out of my house. Get, get away from my family. My family is in this house and you need to get out. I own a Glock pistol in my house and you need to get out because I'll, I'll, I need to protect my family from, these, from this, this slander 
that you're, you're screaming and ranting about, about Steve Jobs. You need to leave my house. That's what every historian would say. So that's one of my mentors. Number two, Elon Musk. Wow. Elon Musk. Wow. Wow. Teslas. Wow. Space. Wow. Launching a Tesla into space. Wow. Putting a mannequin on that Tesla. Wow. Wow. Building, building th uh, devices that, that, that shoot flames. Wow. Building a tunnel. Wow. PayPal. Wow. Smoking weed. Wow. Grimes. Wow. Wow. Calling divers in Thailand pedophiles. Wow. That's the only way you can describe him. Number three, O.J. Simpson. Yes, uh, O.J. Simpson does have a bit of a reputation. F let's forget that. O.J. Simpson was one of the greatest college football players of all time. The pure athleticism, the pure drive that O.J. Simpson has, people forget, man, that guy rushed. He was so fast. I've never seen that sort of determination on a, on a athletic level. It brings a tear to my eye watching him play at USC, play for the Buffalo Bills. It's just pure inspiration on that field. Yes, yes, they, he murdered somebody. He murdered a couple people. Just forget about that. Look at the highlights. Look at the beauty of that athleticism. What an inspiration that man is. Forget about the murders. I think 500 years in the future, when we look back at this time, nobody's gonna remember uh, that, that court thing. Um, people are gonna look back and be like, wow, OJ's is so good at rushing. The, he put everything on the field and I am crying because I am watching these highlights from a different time as they uh, ingest neural networks into their frontal cortex on a, on a hovering craft above the Earth's atmosphere. They will be watching those OJ highlights. Finally, one of the people that inspires me the most, it's me. You should be inspiring yourself. I'm a mentor towards myself, self-mentoring. You should wake up every morning, look in the mirror and say, oh my God, who is this person standing here? Who's this cool guy in the mirror looking at me, staring at me? glaring at me. What a legend, what a, what a genius, what a God. <laughs> if, you're not, if you're not waking up and looking in the mirror and saying, look at this God stand before you, towering above everybody, ready to crush anybody in their path or uh, attack them with a hatchet, a bloody hatchet, uh, I think you have no business being an entrepreneur. I also mentor other people. You know, I'm, a, I'm an entrepreneur. I have people that work for me all the time. And so I like to pass on inspiration to other people. I think it's important. I mean, I'm doing it to you. <laughs> I'm, I, you're learning. I like to pass on information to my employees. Um, in the office, I am, I am, I am strict. I am, I am brutal, but I am fair. I am brutal but fair. I like to tell people I'm a mentor, you know, with a strong hand, a strong, a strong slap. You know, for example, people, underlings will come up to me and say, hey, you know, can I get a little advice about something? I am inspired by you. I, I consider you, I look up to you. You know, I would love to have some advice and I generally respond, get away from me or I'll bite you. I'm going to bite you if you don't get away from me. That does two things. One, it, it, it helps people understand I'm in charge. Two, it's also a very emotional response. And I think people take that as, hey, you know, I, I, I got to be the boss here, but I respect you for asking that question. That's what I think they interpret when I tell them I'm going to bite them in my office. But yes, I am a strong, a strong man. I don't, I don't just mentor, you know, people 
at my office. I mentor everybody. Sometimes I'll go into a retirement home. I'll barge in, break the door down and start screaming at them. You need to be a cognitive animal. Uh, start screaming at the elderly. Uh, about how they need to be uh, raise their cognitive awareness and overcome mental obstacles with a hatchet. Uh, a lot of the times they're confused when I do this, but I think underneath it all, uh, they understand what I'm getting at. I think the elderly are worth more than gold. If you asked me, would you want a pound of gold or a pound of old people? I would say a pound of old people. They are a resource that I think is untapped in our society. Uh, give me old people any day. So yeah, I scream at a lot of old people, but uh, a lot of people say, hey, you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Well, I tell them, hey, you can teach an old man new cognitive learning mechanisms as long as you scream loud enough. <laughs> That's, I mean, that's always what I say to people uh, when they tell me not to break into retirement homes. Ultimately, what I'm getting at, find your inspiration through problems, through people, through yelling at old people. All of them work. As long as you find that, you will, you can be a cognitive god, like I've said, a cognitive animal. So thank you for tuning in. Again, I'm going to promote my podcast that I have with Dustin Hahn. He is an entrepreneur as well. Uh, it is called Business Money Hacks. It is a podcast that is extremely important. You need to listen to it. We are changing the way podcasts are even perceived. The podcast people are telling me, hey, stop saying all this. You're giving away too much. People can't handle this. It's crazy that they would call me and say that, uh, but they are. I said, uh-uh, no, we're going to keep uh, telling people all these truths, uh, even if they can't handle it. So again, I'm linking it at the bottom. Uh, business Money Hacks. Check out that podcast. Thank you for tuning in. Make sure to link, subscribe, uh, you know, all that jazz that you're supposed to say at the end of these videos. Um, but yeah, become a cognitive animal with a bloody hatchet.